Hi everyone. So this is a video that I've been wanting to make for a while. It's some beauty tips to look your best when on video. A lot of us since quarantine, since COVID-19, are spending much of our days interacting with people professionally or personally on video. And if you want to look your best on camera, here's some simple tips and tricks that might help you along your way. So the first thing I want to talk about is your lighting source and how you're set up in your office space, if it's your kitchen table, wherever you're doing your video meetings or your video chats with people, you, if at all possible, you want to have a light source that's coming at your face. So I'm right now in front of a window. So I'm facing the window and that's creating a brightness on my face. And that's what you're looking for. I'm just going to move now and put the window behind me and show you the difference that it makes. So I'm moving in my office now and the window's behind me and you can see how dark, how much darker my face looks having a light source coming from behind you versus you facing that light source. If you don't have a window in the room that you're set up in, you can always use an artificial light source like a lamp. So I have a lamp, uh, I actually have a ring light so that, I mean, obviously the nature of a lot of this work that I do with Mary Kay is me wanting to show different makeup looks and all that. So I, I always want you to be able to see my face up close. And so having a ring light uh, is a huge help. But if you don't have a ring light, you can use a lamp and position the lamp. Just play with it, with your lighting to position it so that the face, uh, so that you're facing that light source and the glow of the light is actually coming onto your face. Another thing that I want to say is that, you know, I'm just going to move my camera again now. So if you're sitting down taking your Zoom meetings or your you know, Microsoft Teams, whatever, and you're on a laptop that's sitting down or you're taking it on your phone, this is not a very flattering angle, right? Because you're looking down and it's, you know, it's just not the angle that most of us go for when we're talking about looking our best on camera. So what you want to do is you want to raise up that, uh, the height of whatever it is your camera is on, if it's your phone or your laptop or whatever, you want to raise it up. So for the majority of us, if we're working from home in a professional capacity, you're using a laptop. And so what you want to do is in order to get that, you know, you want to have about an inch or so above your head. That's kind of the ideal. And in order to do that, if you're sitting down, just prop your laptop up on some books. I'm just going to flip my screen here. Well, I was going to flip my screen, but I can. Yeah, here I can. So I just have a photo box under my laptop. You can use, you know, a couple of books, a phone book, whatever you have. Just stack up some books to bring your uh, laptop up to the height so that when you're on video, it's actually... A flattering angle for you. So now that I've covered the light, you want to be facing the light and you want to have your video raised up so it's a flattering angle for you. Usually an angle that's looking down at you is much more flattering than the looking up at you. So I'm just going to pause now and I want to talk about some quick makeup that you can do to improve your look. All right, and so I'm back. I just wanted to um, hook my camera into my, into the stand there so that I'm able to apply some makeup. So as you can see now, I have a lot more than that inch that we talked about, but this is not the angle that my computer will be on. I actually have my camera raised up higher there right now uh, so that I can do makeup for you and show you. So I'm naked on camera for you today, and it's not very often I'll do this, but I'm here with nothing on my face except my skincare, of course. So you want to have hydrated skin. You want to be after, you know, putting on your moisturizer or your day cream or whatever. So with Zoom meetings, with Microsoft Team meetings, with whatever platform you're using, the resolution on them is not really the best. Like it's not going to be as close up as if someone was taking a photo of you. So one thing that you don't really have to worry about too much is that real, you know, like seeing your pores and things like that because the resolution, like I said, is not the best. So I will 
always start off with a CC cream. A primer will be optional in the morning if you're just, you know, in a rush to get on to your morning meetings because again, there's already that lower resolution that's, you know, no one's really looking in that close to your face. And I know for many of us, you're working from home, you've got kids, you've got busy households, so you don't get a whole, whole lot of time to spend in the morning getting your makeup on. So I'm just putting on a CC cream here now. So that's just our complexion correction. It's a really lightweight coverage. It's a nice coverage though. It really evens out any redness or dark spots that you have. And a tip when you're applying your makeup is to start closer at the center of your face. I know I've had this in some recent videos that I've done, but start applying at the center of your face and move out. Most of us have discoloration that's closer to the center of our face. And so then when you're moving your foundation or your CC cream out, the less product is coming out along the edges. So you're less likely to, to get that line that, you know that line I'm talking about, that line none of us want. So that's the CC cream. It's giving an all over evenness and just a glow and a little bit of color. Next, I am going to do some um, under eye corrector. This is huge. Um, eyes are going to be very noticeable on camera. You're connecting with people. And so really, if I were to say the most important thing to focus on for your Zoom meetings, I'm gonna say, get your brows on and get your eyes on. These hollows under your eyes are very visible on camera, probably even more so than in person in that regard. It's just the way that the, the lighting of the camera is. If you have darkness under your eyes, you want to use an under eye corrector. And I'm just dabbing that in. And this under eye corrector is, you know, a peach tone. It's for all skin types and the peach really is there to neutralize darkness. And I'm just really gently, um, I'm down in my office right now, as you can see, so I don't have all my brushes with me, but I would just, you know, you can use your finger for this or you can use a concealer brush to buff this out, but your finger does the trick too. So that's an under eye corrector. If you want to just get that darkness and you want to brighten it up, another trick that I love to do, especially on camera, is to go in with a concealer. And this is a shade lighter than what I would normally use. Actually, this is a couple of shades lighter. This is a light ivory and a couple of little dabs in the corner and in the outer corner. And this is to add some brightness around the eyes. And again, you can just use your finger. So notice that I never went right in under with this concealer because concealer is a little bit of a thicker texture and I don't want it picking up those little creases that are directly below the eyes. So I just kind of let the under eye corrector do its work there. And just look at the difference, just that alone. Like this is not even any eye makeup and the brightness that this is bringing to your eyes. If you have puffiness in the morning when you wake up, you wanna make sure you're using your eye cream, but a little bit of soothing eye gel can instantly sink back any puffiness that you have, and that makes a huge difference when you're about to embark on a day on camera. All right, and so just look at the difference that that makes, and I'm just gently blending, patting, Adding gently under the eye and you can go with the excess in over your lid that's fine it'll only just help your eyeshadow stay put so I mean look at the instant difference to brightness that that makes to my eyes so that's a very simple couple of dabs of product and it really wakes you up makes you look fresh for your meetings and for your day with the right lighting and a couple of the right products it completely changes your look so now I'm not done with the eyes yet. Like I said, your eyes are so important when you're on camera. I love, I know you've seen me use this many times. This is our liquid eyeshadow. And I just love this because it's so quick and easy to use. This is Meteor Shower. This is the color Meteor Shower. Again, I uh, 
you know, you can use your finger. Lots of times I use my concealer cream shadow brush for this, but nothing around with the finger gets the job done. And these are so blendable. They go on wet, they dry into a beautiful powder finish. And I love their staying power. So you could leave that if you want it. I like to generally, I mean, especially if I'm on a meeting and I know that, you know, I, I, I know how much your eyes stand out on camera. I like to go a little bit deeper and really make my eyes stand out. So I'm going in here now with a, a color, it's called Cinnabar. I love it. It's kind of a chocolatey brown. And you will find that the coppers, the browns help to make blue eyes pop. And they are definitely the colors that I tend to go with. And then I just take the extra from the brush and sweep under the eye. And that makes such a big difference. And now I'm going to go in and I'm going to do the same here. So you're almost doing a sort of a V on the end and then you can carry it through to your crease, blend it in. And then I like to sweep the extra in under the eye. So that's really two shadows that I used to just make the eye stand out like this. And now if you got some extra, like, I mean, right here, it's like could be cleaned up a little bit. You can use your finger to do that. You can take your bigger, uh, like a blending brush and do it. I mean, very gently. And there you have it. So that's eyes. I always use an eyeliner and a mascara. If you're gonna be wearing your glasses all day, your glasses are gonna be picking up some reflection. I always recommend, if, if you're wearing your glasses, you don't have to be too worried about eye shadow per se but I will get on some eyeliner and some mascara to make your eyes stand out behind your glasses lens. Now, my eyeliner is our waterproof liquid pen, just like a Sharpie. And here I go. You're, I'm usually tight lining this and tight lining means that you're just getting as close to your lash line as possible. All right, so that's that one. And again, I just find eyeliner on the top of the eye opens the eye up, it makes it, it makes it stand out. You don't have to worry about making a perfect line, just make little strokes. That's the eyeliner. And then I'm going to go in with a mascara just to completely make my eyes pop on camera. So I'm using our Fanorama mascara right now. If you're spending the day on video, you want a nice bold mascara. You can use any mascara I love. This is a limited edition for us. It has volume and it has lengthening. If you like to curl your eyelashes, I don't generally do it in the morning, um, just for a work day. Love to do it if I'm going out. But if you like to curl your lashes, this is a great time to do it. Just because it makes them all the more noticeable when you're on camera. All right, and I don't generally do my bottom lashes. I have lots of lashes on the bottom, um, but for camera, I find this just really makes my eyes stand out. Just those few products. Now, brows. Brows make a big difference. If you're going spending a day on camera, take the time to do your brows. So uh, I'm just gonna blend that another little bit there. It's different doing this in the camera than in a mirror, in my phone than in the mirror. But 
All right, so for a brow, you can also, while you're, if you don't want to curl your lashes, while your mascara is still a little bit tacky, while still a little bit wet, you can just push it up with your fingers to give it a curl. All right, now, if you have a full brow already and you don't really need to fill in, your brows might be fine. Some people will like to um, dry out their brows. Some people might need to use a little bit of brow tint to keep them in place. I'm going to fill mine in because they're sparse in certain areas. And again, we don't need to be perfect. Like I said, the resolution on your video meetings isn't great. And probably by the time this video gets transferred over into a Facebook platform, the resolution will be much similar to what we're seeing um, on a video meeting. So it wouldn't hurt for me to give my brows a little comb because they're a little bit out of kilter there on the, on the side. And then my brows are sparse from the arch down, so that is really where I'm spending just a little bit of attention to fill them in. Again, no one's up that close. You're on video, but you're just filling them in. And thinnest right here. So that's really the part that I want to just make sure that if I turn sideways on my video, you can see the other end of my brow. All right. So now I got my eyes done. I don't have, I only have CC on my face so far. I like to have a little bit of color. Keeping in mind that the camera is washing you out. So you wanna go a little bit more bold than you normally would day to day when you're on camera because that light source in front of your face is washing out color even though it's adding brightness. I'm gonna add some bronzer uh, and a cheek color goes a long, long way. So this is just a bronzing powder. I'm using it to define my cheekbone. And then doing my number threes. And down the nose. Some people will say do a W for that part of your face. And this gives a nice sun-kissed glow. Makes such a big difference. Just a little bit of bronzing powder. And I'm going to add a little pink to my cheeks. And again, if you were to look at me in person now, this would look bolder then it's looking on camera. But I wanna have, like I said, the, the light source in your face tends to wash you out so you're going a little bit more bold for the camera to make it noticeable. So when you're applying it in the morning, apply it a little bit heavier because when you turn your camera on, it's not going to look heavy. So I'm starting to become a new woman. I would have to work on my hair now if I was uh, going to work, but working on the face, and then the final thing is your lips. Now, I don't know if you like to wear a bold color or not, but a, a bolder, colorful lipstick on camera really makes you shine. It makes your face stand out. And today I'm going to use, I got a brought down a couple, but I think I'm gonna put on Powerful Pink. And here we go. This is like my summer red. I love it even though it's not red, but it's a beautiful reddish cherry pink. Now, if you just like to wear a gloss, that's fine, but put something on your lips to make your lips stand out. Um, I could easily put a gloss over top of this now to give it some extra shine, but what a difference this makes from the naked lady who stepped on to now with, you know, open eyes, some color in the cheeks, some color on the lips. It's just so much more 
I don't know. If you want to, if you want to enhance your look while you're on camera, these are some tips for you. Now, my final thing. Now that everything is done, I want to talk about translucent powder. Translucent powder is your best friend when you're on camera. And I'm just going to put some on. So it's a, it's a white, it's a clear translucent powder. It looks white. And what this does is. I compare translucent powder to mini disco balls. So the translucent part, it illuminates your face. It doesn't add shine, because shiny is not what we want. This actually cuts back on shine and creates glow. So mini disco balls and concentrate to the center of your face. And it just creates an overall beautiful glow that works very nicely with the light source in front of you and the camera. And there you have it, some beauty tips to look your best while on video. I hope that you have enjoyed this. If you have any questions about any of the products that I used, I would love to uh, have, your, have you ask them in the comments or shoot me a message. Have a great day, thank you.